I invite them to my house sometimes. Nice. Yeah. Okay, how can you handle, how can you deal with a man who does not want you to work? It doesn't matter what business you do, doesn't matter if you made the money. Ah, okay. <laughs> but they were spying on you. Spying, getting. I was the youngest one. Welcome to the Talkie Walkie podcast. Today we have a new guest, a lady. The first lady, the first female guest in the podcast. She's going to share with us her experience on how she became an entrepreneur because she became a very successful entrepreneur doing a business that I would never think to do. I'm sure you're going to love it. And you're going to learn how people start to do business with an idea that clicks in the mind. Like, idea comes out of nowhere. Let's do it. Welcome to Casablanca, my friends. And welcome to Sarah. Hi. Sarah is here. First time for her. Yes. To, no, no, it's not the first time on the camera. No, it's not my first because time you on have the been, camera, yeah. it's my first time with you. Yes, because you have been doing uh, some reels on your yes, on Instagram. My Instagram. My yes. personal Instagram and my agency, like Casa Education Agency Instagram account. Casablanca, uh, okay. Casa Education means Casablanca, Casablanca edu Education. education. Oh, okay. We work close. But you know that you are the first entrepreneur female in my channel. Oh, that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So today we're gonna spend some time together, and I want you to share your really. I really like your story. Thank uh, you. How you were a master degree student. And I also like your story. Thank and you. I've been following you for the last uh, four, five years. Yeah. So, wow. By the way, I have sent you a message on 2021 <laughs> <laughs> that you have ignored. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just didn't check. Really. And then I by just, chance we met. By recently, chance, yes, yes, and, uh, yes, hey, yes, you're yes. Here. Great. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about, I mean, how did you start? I mean, how did you choose this career? Okay, but let's My walk, <laughs> let's walk and uh, let's walk here and we talk, okay. So I have studied a bachelor degree in business management. Nice. And I followed it by an MBA in uh, project management. Project management. Yes, I studied here in Casablanca in an off campus of a UK, British like university. A UK? Yeah, UK. <laughs> And uh, at the same time, I was working with my father because he used to own a biscuit factory. Yeah, wow, which is very different okay. from what I'm doing actually. Wow. I remember the first time when I asked my dad, can I join? He was like, yeah, whoever wants to come can come to work with me. Okay. That's fine. But he told me, whatever you have studied at the university, yeah. leave it there. Because working in a, like a family... Uh, business. business is very different, it's different than story. what we have studied uh, at the university. So, I was doing the MBA. It was uh, uh, a part-time MBA, mm. and uh, I was the all, I was the youngest one in my class. Wow! So they were only professionals, uh, like other people. I was uh, at that time. I was like 23, 24, 23, 24. years old, and we started at the beginning of the class of the program. We were like 15. Okay. After one year and a half, we ended up being five or six. So the majority, wow. so all of them not they easy. Disappeared. It's not about being easy or not. They didn't have time to come and attend because ah. our class was just on Friday evening and Saturday morning and okay. sometimes Sunday. So by chance, they were all like all busy during the, the weekend with their families or have been a mission somewhere yeah. in another city or another country sometimes with their jobs. So, while doing my MBA, I spoke to a friend of mine, Dr. Nikhil Agarwal, who is a researcher at Cambridge University. Okay. And by the way, I met him while I was doing my bachelor at that school. He was invited by the school uh, to animate a conference. Mm -hmm. And I was nice and asked and I suggested to take him out to visit Casablanca. Okay. And since then, we kept in touch and we became friends. Yeah. And later, I will explain to you what, what other activities we have done together. So, uh, he told me, I told him like the problem uh, of my uh, classmates. Yes. And the fact that they have, uh, um, they have uh, given up the program. So, he told me that in the UK, there are many un British universities that offer online programs. Okay. okay I was like, okay, yeah. That's not something uh, that uh, existed in Morocco. That yes. Time. It was 2013. Yeah. So in 2014, he introduced me to a UK university. Mm -hmm. 
I signed an agreement with them. I created my startup that time, Casa Education, in 2014. So 10 years. Wow, that's 10 years. Yeah, that's 10 years. Yeah, that's... Your business is really... Yeah. So wow. that time there was no online uh, program. Programs, yeah. Especially it was before COVID. So mm. uh, I started with the ambition of having like a lot of clients from Morocco, mm. but I was wrong. Here, people that time, I precise, they they really believe on having a teacher in front of them, interacting with classmates. Ah, they don't like they don't really believe, tolerate yeah. the online online no, classes. No, but now okay. things have changed since COVID. Okay. Post COVID, things are different. So I ended up having clients from other countries, but not from Morocco. And like the, like Saudi Arabia, okay. Emirates, Algeria, oh, okay, yeah, Canada. Can, okay. Because I was having very good discounts. Oh, okay. But still, my contract, my agreement was limited mm. for uh, to recruit from some regions only. And then I started being approached by other universities interested to recruit students from Morocco to study in the UK. Okay. As well as language centers. So this is how it started. Ah. Having an agreement with one university. And now I have with more than 100 universities in the UK, but also in other countries, countries. and language centers. But the, the, the crazy thing is that everything started by knowing a person. Exactly. You see, that's, I don't know, this is chance or luck or destiny. I believe in destiny. Yes. So maybe this is destiny. So this yeah. is from one side. From the other side, uh, end of 2014, I was also organizing some workshops for entrepreneurs. Mm and for companies. And uh, I invited my friend, Nikhil Agarwal, to come and animate a workshop on entrepreneurship and innovation. That time, 2014, when we used to say entrepreneur, especially in French, entrepreneur, mm. most of people here, they thought it was someone who builds like uh, buildings and do real estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yes. a bit hard to explain that it's not the case. Anyone who anyone does business. Does yeah. business yeah, in any uh, field, any field. sector. Wow. So we did the entrepreneur, uh, the, the, the workshop, two days workshop. And at the end of the second day, he asked us, do you have here in Morocco any events where entrepreneurs meet and discuss their ideas? We were like, no. He was like, okay, Sarah, let's discuss this. He went to the airport and uh, he was going back to India because he's Indian. And he went through Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and he called me. Sarah, you know, I think we should or we should create something, organize something in a very uh, continuous way. I was like, yeah, sure, what? He was like, okay, what about Entrepreneur Cafe, which is a, wow. a meeting where entrepreneurs, any potential entrepreneur, students, anyone interested by entrepreneurship yeah, yeah. in general can come and share their thought with others. It was like, okay, when? Let's do it every second and fourth Thursday of each month. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, we have created a page on uh, Facebook. That time Instagram was not very popular here. Mm -hmm. uh, website, very easy, you know, with the very yeah. basic information. And we decided to launch our first entrepreneur cafe on the 11th of December, 2014 in Casablanca. <laughs> That's where the idea came from. Yeah. Casablanca, Delhi, Boston, Manchester and Dubai. Wow. Five cities, same day, 6 p.m., but different time zones, wow. of course. And at Starbucks. Well, Starbucks, why? That time? Because that's the only yes. franchise we can find everywhere. Yes. Okay. And by the way, they say Starbucks is not a coffee and it's not an office. It's something between coffee and office. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. So okay. I launched the, 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 the event on Facebook, invited my friends first because we needed like people, something, yeah. people pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, some of my friends came. Others, other people I didn't even know. They also yeah. came. They yeah. attended. And while starting the discussion, like we were thirty, wow. official thirty. Yeah. While starting the discussion and and exchanging, other people who were who were like uh, drinking their coffees, started asking us, "What is this? Like, uh, can we join? We are uh, we are also interested." Okay. We ended up like forty-five or something the first day. Okay. It was amazing for the first time wow. in Casablanca. Yeah, good. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's then, a big number. After second, third, fourth uh, uh, meeting, uh, especially in Casablanca, but they were also organizing their events in okay. other countries. I started being approached by other people from other cities in Morocco, interested to um, 
to launch the same uh, concept in their cities. And how about, how about the other countries they, they were going to? Oh, they, yeah, man, we happening. were in more than 120 cities after uh, almost a year. All over the world? All over the world. Wow. We were in Colombia, we were in Mexico, US, of course, Canada, UK, France, uh, Nigeria, wow. um, uh, Egypt, uh, Turkey. Uh, and of course, different different cities in India because India is, yes, is big, yes. and that's where most of our community is. Yes, sure. After one year, we have organized our first 24 hours non-stop event in New Delhi. Wow! The year after, in India again, in Bangalore, third year again, and just this uh, January, like January 20, uh, 24. In India again, in Delhi. Our Are you still seventh. part of this? Of course, yes. I was. Uh, I, I was. Yeah, you're one India. of the founders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm the co-founder of the concept Entrepreneur Cafe. So, just uh, this uh, this January 2024, I was in India for our seventh annual global event. You just had a conversation with your yeah. client. Okay, yes. so uh, I just want to So my phone you. is on 24-7. Yeah. Wherever I'm on earth, either I'm in Morocco or overseas, I have to answer the calls. That's what makes um, my client like the service because it's not just about like uh, uh, getting an acceptance letter for their uh, uh, daughter or uh, son or applying for a visa and helping them. It's especially it's a relationship I build with the, with families. Okay, yeah, that's that's very important because I ha I know a couple of people who does the education service, mm -hmm. but they don't really do it themselves. What they do is they hire workers, and those workers does everything, and for them they just collecting money. Uh, I do everything <laughs> on my own. Yes, not because I don't want to have a staff, but because I. I like to do things on my own and uh, do the follow-up and that's what yeah. people are looking for yeah. that's what makes me different from um, others other agencies uh, okay. in Morocco or overseas okay can you can you tell me a couple of challenges that you faced to start this business or to, to do business in general as a well, female when I started at, at, the, at the beginning when I started my challenge was to convince people to uh, send their uh, young uh, uh, children to uh, to the UK or to other countries to study abroad because they saw me as a young lady maybe with no experience that time ah, okay. you see uh, so they worry they worry maybe she's serious maybe she knows what she's doing maybe she doesn't know but thanks God with the uh, with time they understood that I have the capability to follow up not just to register them somewhere and uh, and uh, forget yeah. about them and not answer their calls. You know what? Uh, a lot of people, when they want to do business, mm -hmm. they generally think about, um, I don't know, digital marketing, e-commerce, import-export, this kind of things. But to do education business, it's, it's something like I've never thought about it. And many people, they never think about it. Yeah. Uh, but as you said, you found yourself doing it. Yeah. Uh, it's true that me too at the beginning I've never thought of doing something related to education for yeah. me like I have studied so I had to work in a banking sector insurance or factory or something like a real job having a real job not just uh, waiting for people to come and uh, ask me to help them to, uh, to study overseas but uh, with time I noticed that this is very important for me as a person because I like to help people. It's not just about money, about charging people when they come to see me or, no, it's a, a long-term relationship that I'm interested to build with those families. Okay. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm in touch with a lot of families that I've helped like uh, five, six years ago. Their uh, kids have graduated and even work. They are even working uh, somewhere, either in Morocco or UK or other countries. Yeah. But I'm still in touch with them. On my birthday, they call me. I call them on their birthday whenever there is a national, uh, not national, but so there is something important. Yeah. They invite me. They, they invite me to their house. I invite them to my house sometimes. Nice. Uh, yeah. 
it's it's all about the relationship, not about the the, the money or the commission okay. that I get from uh, helping them. Okay, li I like it actually. I like it. That's 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 the thing because I really believe in building a relationship with your clients. I mean, of course, you have to choose uh, the client you will build the relationship of course, with. Of yeah, course. yeah. I have to filter all the time. You have, have to, to filter, filter. I yeah. Not, like work with, work with anyone just like that because I receive different profiles. You know, to give an example, for example, here in Morocco, most of the people they go who go and study abroad they go to French-speaking countries. Because of the language, because our second language in Morocco is French. But now the trend has changed. First of all, US, UK, but also to China, to Turkey, to Spain, to different, different, different countries. So I have a large portfolio of partners I work with. Okay. So that's why whenever someone comes to me, I have to do a profiling first, see what they want to study, but also the budget of their parents. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. On the other hand, another challenge that I have faced when I was uh, when I first started this business is the fact of having to travel abroad to uh, visit the universities I work with. And uh, coming from wow. a Muslim country, it was <laughs> a bit challenging and yeah. uh, difficult to convince my parents and my family that I have to travel alone. Yeah. For a certain not period easy, of not time. Easy. Not easy, yes. But when I made my first, second, third trip overseas alone, they understand that it's okay. It's okay. I can do it. Great, yeah. And sometimes I've spent like, uh, it happened to me to spend something like four or five months abroad alone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And not But easy. I was working uh, online because my job is to. Uh, meet with people here sometimes but yeah. also I can most of my clients I've never met them until I went to the places where they study yeah. generally in the UK or Europe or some other countries but I really uh, res I lived in Slovenia for a couple of uh, months Slovenia Slovenia yes wow yeah uh, I really respect something on you which is uh, okay being strong like it's not easy nowadays to find strong uh, ah. women who can do many things and you know start their business build their life listen i have it, two it's, options it's a, it's a, sorry it's a complicated topic yes it's a very complicated topic we can discuss it i'm very open mind so there are two options i can either you know quit stop what i'm doing mm -hmm. apply for a job which is very 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 easy stable job stable job uh, expect receiving a monthly fixed salary and that's it or or continue what I'm doing and uh, try to improve adventure. My, my services and my uh, business my adventure. Business. It's not easy because we don't meet. Uh, it's not always that we meet with the with the right people. You know, sometimes we meet with very crazy people who keep asking questions and asking and asking and asking, and that's fine. I have no problem. And sometimes we meet with very easygoing people who trust you from the first day. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, for yeah, this reason, yeah, for this reason, I have moved from working from a uh, like a, an office kind of apartment where I used to work before to work in a co-working space. The reason for me going uh, opting for a co-working space now is it's secure. I can meet like uh, new people. New people, of course. New friends. Uh, new friends uh, connections. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> you know, you know that better than me. This is from a side, but also from, especially from the security side, because I don't know who can come to, uh, for example, I receive a call from someone who's interested to come for and to get an appointment to come and discuss his potential uh, study plans. Okay. I don't know who the person is. It might be a thief yeah, 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 or a yeah. serious person, or I don't know. So for yeah. this reason... Or someone who doesn't like you and he just want to hurt you. Yeah. By the way, just for the anecdote, I have received many, many, many competitors coming to my office and asking information on behalf of their kids. Ah, okay. <laughs> but they were spying on you. Spying, getting tra spying, coming to take like uh, okay. prospectuses. But it's fine, yeah, you know. It's, fine. it's okay. Part of the game. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. This is uh, this is the beauty of Casablanca, the seaside. 
Yeah, I love the beach. I'm a big fan of water. Wow, look at how it looks. Awesome, isn't it? Wow. Love it. I do have a little question that I think very controversial question. How do you manage to be an entrepreneur woman oh. and um, having a partner, I mean a husband or partner, who will accept you to work? Because your work requires you to be on phone and working all day long. Mm -hmm. So how can you handle that? Well, um, actually it's a very difficult um, thing. It's very difficult to find someone who can understand the fact that I have to be on my phone and slash computer all the time, uh, answer calls sometimes uh, in the evening or on, on the weekend, and also have to travel very often. So this is very, 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 very difficult to find someone who can understand this. So ideally, like for anyone who, who's, doing, uh, uh, who's doing something similar to my job, we can find that so the girl and like the, the lady and the men they work on the same field but for me it's very difficult it's for me to uh, to have someone who can understand this i think it's really difficult because nowadays uh, most of men they want their wife to stay at home or don't work okay for me in my opinion me if you ask me my wife She's staying at home, not because I want her to stay at home, because she wants. That's her decision. Okay? She studied, my wife, she studied uh, what they call that customs. She used to work in customs, she studied customs and all that. And, and she wants to stay at home. She doesn't want to work. But if she wants to work, I don't have a problem. Now she's into, she wants to learn editing, video editing, all that. Oh, so she wants to go to school and study how to edit, study that stuff because she thinks she like it. So if you want to work in that field, it's okay for me. I don't have a problem. Okay, how can you handle, how can you deal with a man who does not want you to work? But, let's say something. He will provide everything. Oh. Can you give me your opinion? Because this is, yeah, this is hard. Very really? Very honest. Honest? Okay, go. Uh, well, my honest uh, answer is, even if he provides me with everything I might need or not, I won't accept like staying at home and uh, just uh, doing the... Uh, the, the homework or the housework. No, that's not me. Because I like being uh, independent financially. That's from one side. From the other side, no, I like no. being active. Why you want to be independent financially? Seriously, I don't find... My, like, I can't see myself asking my husband or my partner or whatever we can call it. Please, I need money to buy this. Or I need money to uh, change my laptop or to travel or to go to the Moroccan spa. This is like the basic thing you, you feel like embarrassed to keep asking him all the time yeah very embarrassed yeah mm. unless you find a very good husband who is a very understanding man who will just himself without you tell him anything he will provide you no 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 and it's hard to find someone like this now it's not even uh, um, uh, being able to have all the financial aspects uh, in my hands but um, it's, it's about being active. Even if I'm doing something without even generating any revenues or any money, yeah. I like going out, meeting people, uh, interacting with others, attending events, traveling, visiting new uh, destinations, new schools, new universities. That's me. Okay. So I, I cannot see myself like changing all my lifestyle for someone, which might at the end uh, be the life partner or not. Okay, I have another question. Question. Yeah. Because, no, you know why I'm asking you this because yes, uh, you are my first female guests, sure. and a lot of men in my that I know they all they all want to know and understand these kind of questions. Uh, okay, your decisions and you you want to be independent on, on all that that it has something to do with feminism or not or is just you want. No, no, it's just me. I have nothing to do with feminism. It has nothing to do with feminism or anything else. It's just me. I am like that. Good job. Thank you. Let's go. Let's, let's drink coffee. Let's drink coffee. Sure. I want to show them this. Uh, uh, look at that, guys. Beach and surf school. The vibe is high, man. 
the vibe is there it's just looks awesome i don't know guys how to bring you out from the screen and let you see this Woo, nice okay let's go let's go for coffee let's go for coffee so she's trying to be healthy but today i pushed her to break her healthy uh habits our cheat cheat day right like yeah but in reality we have cheat days every day <laughs> but honestly um we want to eat this stuff because tomorrow i'm leaving yeah. morocco so in morocco the desserts are really like next level so you should always finish your uh yeah. day and the trip with something sweet yeah i like the way you uh explained and you described the thing about women working you know all that yeah and it's a very sensitive yeah. subject but that's yeah. the reality but the problem that people they link work women working following her career trying to be independent trying to be successful at her job the linkage with feminism so that's why i asked no, you, no, no. That's, you uh, know. that's very different in my case yeah but also i think okay this is one of the things you may agree with me you may not but yeah. it's my idea i think what makes women now uh just try their best to work and to be successful is that like real real men like <laughs> they become very few uh, like many uh, many people they don't really uh know what means being a real man well you know? this is uh, there are new trends in the world not just in our country and you know everyone is following those trends nowadays for example some trends uh, i don't want to talk about it so. <laughs> <laughs> okay mm. let's be serious <laughs> yeah because i believe if a wife see her husband as a real man a protector um who protects her a provider who provides her the person who doesn't really criticize her 24 hours uh, all that she will never think about working somewhere else she actually she will help him in his job she will support him yes but uh, right? unfortunately um, things have changed in the last couple of years I would say and uh, women became uh, selfish and men as well okay so each one of the two wants to be the best without caring about what the other is uh, thinking or doing in the end i would say it's about the couple, it's about the couple. If, if they really have a beautiful vibe energy between them yeah understanding understanding they it's will, they will be okay communication yeah uh, and most of the time those two uh, are absent in a relationship i'll tell you something in japan generally in japan women they they love to stay at home they don't want to work why because it's the opposite in japan women work mm -hmm. so hard also men both of them they work so hard they don't even have time for each other so women are really tired in japan and they just their dream is just stay, stay at home okay and they don't va and they value they appreciate okay oh if of course if if the husband as i mentioned provides care it's not everything no? in uh, care and money it's it's more than that so it's about uh, giving the uh, like um, giving the real value to the lady you have at home to the woman you have at home your wife or your partner so yeah. you should give her value more than anything else material things do not really matter 100% of course they are important in a in a in a relationship or yeah. a family yeah but uh, it's about value. value it's about the value you should make her feel safe special special safe and special not yeah. like being in doubt i don't know what will happen tomorrow yes true let's enjoy yeah, sure. this tasty food gentlemen um we had a really good time drinking coffee there and now we decided to go to a very historical location she introduced me to this location it's a really nice place it's and called El Hubus. El Hubus. We're gonna go there and we're gonna continue the conversation there and maybe have some Moroccan tea. Yeah. Moroccan green mint tea. With and Moroccan pastries again. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, we drink tea and have a, a nice conversation. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. Guys, look at this location. It's awesome. History, guys. History. History. 
So I came here. We're gonna drink more rock and tea there and continue the conversation. Can you believe that this is the uh, court? This is the court. And by the way, let me let me let me zoom on it. You see, um, Morocco has two languages. So there's Arabic there, and there is I think Amazigh language or something. It's another language, uh, and it looks like uh, Greece, Greek. So what's special about this place? It's a historical place uh, yeah. where you can find a lot of uh, local shops. Yeah. Artisanal uh, things. Yes. Uh, like um, Moroccan traditional goods. Goods. And, and there's some nice coffee shop there. For anyone visiting Casablanca for the first time, uh, this is a, a must see. Yes. Yeah. So they have to, you have to come here. And we're gonna drink Moroccan tea! Yes. So she decided to show me this shop and yes. I decided to buy little two cups from here so for my I espresso. I come to this shop yes. to buy um, goods, souvenirs, um, souvenirs yeah. for my friends that I visit overseas. Wow. So they all have something from Morocco. I like this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna buy something for my... Uh, Son's teacher. Teacher. Teacher, yes. Okay. But for me, I'll get this stuff. This cup of uh, coffee. And because you like coffee. Yeah. So you can have this in your yes. house. Yes. Feel like if you're in Morocco every morning <laughs> when you have your Yeah. Coffee. So we decided to buy these cups for my teacher, my son's teacher. So what shall we? Okay. Oh, look at that, guys! Looks very traditional and awesome. Uh, so, what people can buy from here? Moroccan pastry. Oh, okay. Look, guys, too many things. They are all delicious. Wow. And the house is very old, like, very traditional. Nice, yeah? Really? Very, yeah. Tasty, right? I love this kind of, uh, like, like the old city traditional stuff. Yeah. You know, those carpets are really expensive, but they look good. They look really good. Look at that. Look at how people sitting and having their tea and coffee. It's so good. Wow, look at that, guys. But we're going to sit here. So guys, there's something interesting I want to share with you here, which is, um, first, the vibe here is like next level, something something really awesome. And um, one more thing, this lady, she's an entrepreneur, but at the same time, she's studying, she's doing her PhD. Let's it's talk about DPA. that. A DPA. DPA, okay. Okay. It's a doctorate in business administration. In business administration. Okay, we're gonna talk about that and how can you balance the job, work, and DBA? It's not easy. It's really not easy. Can you can you please explain people what is DBA and what you're doing? How can you balance what? your study and work and you know money and all that? So I'm doing a I'm doing a DBA. A DBA is a doctorate in business administration. I'm doing it with the French school, but they have uh, an office that represents them in Morocco. And um, again, I'm the youngest candidate in the program. Oh, <laughs> you're always the youngest. I'm the youngest. Yeah. So most of the, not most, but all the other uh, candidates are, you know, elder professionals. They have been working for many, many, many years. So am I, but uh, it's a bit different. And um, this uh, DBA will uh, give me the title of doctor after completing it. So now I'm just finalizing the thesis and I will be uh, presenting in the next couple of weeks. But th that's, that will make you really busy. So how can you balance of between course, work and... 
It's very, it's, it, 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 it's taken me, uh, it's taken so much time, but it's something I really wanted to do since I was young. So I really wanted to become a doctor, not a medical doctor, ah, but okay, there are, yeah. thanks God, there are ways of becoming a doctor yeah. in life. Nice. But um, no, I'm not just doing that, by the way. I'm also uh, improving my skills by uh, taking some online courses. I saw one, learning, one online course you were, yes, you were doing last time. Yeah. How to create uh, content on social media. This is something I need to know. I need to know and understand. And I encourage everyone, whatever their, um, uh, their profile or their um, yeah. jobs, to, to, to learn it. And I'm also... It will help them in their business. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, I'm, nowadays, the new trend is to know how to use AI. Wow, yeah. Yeah. And You're learning really, about that too? Yes, I'm learning about that too. Wow. So, uh, it's, um, it's very hard to combine all of these, but I'm trying to manage my time. Yeah. Because time management is very important. Yes. Trying to manage my yeah. time and uh, learn these, those new tools. So awesome people never stop learning. Doesn't matter what business you do. Doesn't matter if you made money. Doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank account. Keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. It will help you. It will help you improve your business, improve your overall, overall life, quality, your mind, your, your psychology. Just keep learning. And don't think that, okay, you made money, you such a made business, you, you made a business, you start to make money and all that, you will stop. No. Even you made money, just keep learning, yeah. So gentlemen, this is the Moroccan tea. Ooh, and the bubbles, the bubbles, the bubbles, the bubbles. Yeah. It's, it's, by the way, why. this is green tea. It's not the red tea or black tea. It's a, it's a green tea. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And the view. The view is everything. Yes. So that was it for today. I hope you liked the, this episode. It was nice, I'm sure, because this is the first time we have a female uh, guest. So thank you so much for watching. Thank, thank you for, you for being me. here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It's, see you in another video, guys. Peace.